the mainstream Linux desktop is coming. But how close are we actually to it? There are many distributions out there that promise an easy to use alternative to Windows or macOS and not gonna lie, some of them actually look really solid. Unfortunately, that's also where it ends. Sort of. Operating systems based on the Linux kernel suffer from one big problem that needs to be solved in order to compete with Microsoft and Apple for taking the crown as the number one choice for most users. Let's talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third part of the monthly Linux blog. And I think that this might actually be the last episode, at least on this strict schedule. Sometimes there just isn't really enough to talk about. And that is a good thing actually. No problems, good experience, happy me. Anyway, let's get into today's first topic on how to make Linux more accessible. Like I said before, I'm convinced that Linux is going to shake up the desktop market as it is. But there are still many small issues that need to be resolved. I mean, don't get me wrong, GNOME, KDE Plasma, Cinnamon and many different desktop environments are working well in the right direction. But what they are all lacking in is proper device support. And I'm not talking about drivers, by the way. I'm talking about fundamental things, like audio for example. I currently own a PreSonus Revelator IO44 audio interface, whereas no driver for Linux is provided. However, one reason why I chose this interface was because it has an internal storage, which holds all of my settings. Of course the different audio mixes don't work, because there is no driver, but all of the inputs and outputs do. Great, right? Everything's working as expected. Not really. See, even though the inputs and outputs work just fine, there is still one massive problem. The way this interface works is that you have two inputs in two separate channels. The XLR port for the left channel and the microphone headset port for the right. On Windows, if you are recording with OBS, you only hear the microphone in your left ear. You need to set it to mono in order for it to work properly. On Linux, it's exactly the same situation. However, Linux Audio, in my case Pipewire, has a really interesting quirk. The microphone is picked up as a surround device. So basically what happens is that instead of two channels, it tries to pick up more and mixes them together to a surround signal. In contrast to Windows where you only have sound in your left ear, on Linux you have sound on both ears whereas the left side is only more pronounced. So what happens when you try to mix it together to a mono track then? Well, you just get a far worse audio quality out of it than on Windows. And before you comment that this device is not meant to be run on Linux and that it's not Linux's fault, it works on Windows, Android, macOS, iOS and even Chrome OS. The problem is not the device and missing drivers. It's the way that Pipewire or Pulse Audio tries to mix together a surround system on an input device. Now, why am I even telling you this? On other operating systems, there is an option for selecting the way on how a microphone should be picked up before it even gets sent to any applications. If I could select stereo here, then the issue would be resolved. Speaking of, I find it kind of weird that there is no inbuilt option for forcing stereo or adjust settings like the sampling rate or bit depth. Sure, there are some applications that offer you some adjustments, but even those don't offer settings for some stuff. I'm not saying that most users need those settings, but what I am saying is that my feature is exclusive to Linux and that there is also reason why those settings are implemented in other operating systems. Anyway, that is an easy fix. Just put in all of the options, even those that don't seem to work. I mean, you already have a test button implemented, so... Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's switch it up for something more positive. Gaming. Gaming on Linux is going to change the whole operating system on its own. I really hope that the Steam Deck is more of a Nintendo Switch success instead of a PS Vita. Since the more people get to experience the Steam Deck, the higher the chance is that they use the desktop mode and the more feedback can be provided to the developers. Many Linux users out there don't game and that's fair. But I think it's important to acknowledge that gaming nowadays is pretty mainstream and it's the first entry into the Linux world for some users without even advertising it. I mean, how many actually know that the Steam Deck runs on Linux? All they know is, and please don't take this seriously, it is a gaming handheld that supports many PC games and can also be used with a Windows-like desktop. Again, no offense to the KD Plasma team, but that's just what they are going to be comparing it to. Speaking of Windows-like, some of you might know that I'm using GNOME 42, which does not even close look like Windows by default. You wanna know why I think that GNOME is actually the better choice for newcomers instead of KD Plasma? Because they try to build their own ecosystem. GTK4 and the new Lipid Vita theme are aiming towards a standardized way on how applications should look by default on a Linux system with GNOME. 
emphasis on the by default. You can still customize it if you really want to. I like GNOME because it's different. It takes some inspiration from macOS and Windows, and especially since GNOME 40, it's increasingly becoming more user-friendly, and I don't find it hard to learn. Though, the big application menu is certainly something weird, especially when coming from Windows. And did I mention that it works beautifully with touchscreens? If my Surface Pro 7 would support it due to some Intel bullshit, sorry. Uh, yeah, hi there, future Michael here. Actually, they just got it working for the Surface Pro 7 Plus, and also the pen is now available in Experimental. Just want to let you know. No, but for real though, GNOME is miles ahead in front of Windows when it comes to touchscreen usability. Alright, enough fanboying around GNOME. Let's talk about something else, and I want your opinion on this. Should we even try to teach newcomers the terminal or not? Before you start commenting, let me show you something first. I've recently had a discussion with someone about this, and that's what he said. If you use Linux, then you should use its most powerful tool. But here is the thing, my man, the terminal, command line, or whatever it's called on any operating system is also the most powerful tool there. Sure, not every solution is a good one, but one thing holds true. Most users simply don't need it. Imagine if Windows guides were just referring to the PowerShell. It would be a nightmare. Yes, I know, I know. The Linux terminal and the bash shell are much simpler to use, and you're right. But does this still mean that we should force it on them? My answer is a clear no. The reason why so many Linux users rely on the terminal is 1. They're more IT oriented or even developers and 2. There's just no way in the GUI. That's it. That, that's literally it. Just because the command line is the fastest and most powerful tool, at least if you know what you're doing, does not automatically mean that it is for everyone. And that needs to change. Better desktop environment support isn't going to hurt it anyway. It will always be here, no matter what. It is never going to be replaced, so what are you worried about? Making Linux more accessible is very easy in theory, but in practice it takes a lot of effort from the really awesome developers working on desktop environments and applications, but also from us, the community. So let's keep being critical, point out flaws, but also be encouraging and thankful for what they do. And that is where I'll leave it. So if you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and even a sub. I'm also live on my second channel from time to time. Emphasis on time. <clears throat> if you want to see another awesome video, then you should definitely check this one out. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.